Hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi. And this is the live streaming where I will stitch throughout the camera without any edit. And yep, while I talk about something related to Sashiko. <clears throat> Let me set up a little bit. I hope that this is good audio. I think the audio is good. Let me check the audio first. Yep, that's good. Next is <laughs> camera. Good, good. Okay. I'm not sharing something crazy. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Um, I will start stitching. This is going to be the last live streaming in 2022. Hello, Lily Sam. So, um, I really appreciate your support and following this and listening to that. And, you know, although you're not the one who I really have to deal with the message, I really appreciate you being here and supporting that and helping me to spread the word. I'll be doing the exact same thing for next year, and this is going to be the same place, the place where. You don't have to worry about being defining yourself or being defensive. You don't have to defend yourself at all. I want to make this place as the basho, where the place you can belong to. And I'm not going to teach anything. I'm not going to, you know, elaborate the how-to or tutorials. It's going to be the place, time, together to stitch or to do something. Okay? I will stitch the... Sorry, I'll switch the camera. I switched the camera already, so I will start the stitching. There we go. <clears throat> and if there's any request for me to talk about, let me know. Hello, happy holiday. I hope everybody had a good Christmas break, Christmas weekend. And everybody is staying warm because... That was a little crazy. That was a little crazy weekend. It's still cold, I guess, but... That was quite strange. <clears throat> we think that winter is a really natural season for Sashiko. Like, many people think of winter when we hear the word sashiko. I don't think many people think about the summer when they hear the word sashiko, but that's because of the stories behind it. Sashiko was developed in the harsh condition with limited resources. In those harsh conditions, is often, often in the snow area where they could not have a enough just let me let me find where it stopped last time yeah <clears throat> it's often the snowy snowy places like mountain places where they had a really limited um, resources due to the transportations or infrastructures like they could not people could not travel over the winter and they did not have much work to do over the winter due to the snow so they could not do farming and sashiko is was the stitching for that people as the result we i don't know if there's any reasons for that but it's kind of natural to image the winter for sashiko again there's nothing wrong with imagining summer for sashiko but it's more like a you know orthodox way to think about it <clears throat> it exists everywhere, so it does not have to be the mountain, it doesn't have to be snowy place, places. They are record of Sashiko in the Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, but it's just natural for me to imagine or associate winter snow to Sashiko. So it's, it was kind of good to see winter, I mean, sorry, good to see the snow outside and stitch together. At the same time, it was too cold. <laughs> I think I'm. my hands are still cold. At 
the <laughs> the room I am in right now is quite bad. <laughs> I don't want to say bad, but it's pretty hot in summer and very cold in the winter. So I got to do something about it. I don't know what what I can do though. My goal is to get a studio, but I don't know how. I mean, I have so much more things to do than renting a place to make a studio. If if what I do has a sorry, if I if I if what I do requires a lot of space. Um, pl probably renting a space as a studio is more efficient and more productive. You know, like painting, <clears throat> sculptures, woodwork, those, you know, those crafts, those handcrafting requires a lot of space. So it's very really understandable and it's very really nice idea to get a studio. Nah, not for Sushiko, you don't really need a space. So it's just purely wish <laughs> it's a purely hope to have those spaces and that's probably the last thing i do though i have a lot of things that i have to do first not a have to i want to do first so yeah this is the end of the 2022 it has been quite up and down for 2022 I won't be different at all. I will be exactly the same as like this. I will be stitching probably the same pattern, same fabric again next year because I have not finished 100 meter yet. And there will be no changes for me to talk about. But if there's anything that I would be able to cover over the lives, not a live, over the live streaming, please let me know. It is very really challenging. I realized the challenge. I accepted the challenge of what I'm doing. It's it's not as easy as I thought. <laughs> Many people told me that it's not easy, and I knew that it was not easy. But in those two weeks of me resting, and the more I The more, the more honest I become to myself, not to the stories. I what I share is, I think it's honest. But I was not probably honest to myself sincerely. The more I become honest to myself, it's a quite difficult journey. <clears throat> I received a comment. I'm not gonna pick up on that comment itself because. You know, she did not mean, they did not mean bad about it. But I really often get the comments saying that I don't understand what you're saying. Like, I'm not sure what you're saying in the Instagram post. I don't know if I received those comments on YouTube, but Instagram has a very limited space to write. And my purpose to write on the Instagram is to introduce how the Japanese could communicate which is the be reading between lines. So the whole purpose of me writing in, in the Instagram is to encourage them to read bet between lines. So I understand it might not be easy to understand. And I used to sort of blame myself for not writing it clearly, but me changing to r write clearly, the to, to, for me to change the story, I'm sorry, for me to change myself to write a story clearly, is almost adapting myself to the English mindset, which is very really necessary if I live in the U.S. And you know, if I'm talking about something non Japanese, I am. I don't talk like that to my wife. I have a very really specific way to talk about it. But since I'm introducing Japanese culture, I like to try to be as Japanese as possible, even when I write in English. So the question comes, like you know, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't, I'm not sure what you're talking about. And then it comes up like, it usually comes with follow-up question, like, are you saying this? And 
usually my answer is yes and no. I'm saying that, but at the same time, that's not everything I'm saying. That's why I keep saying, like, please keep reading that. And it's not a... I don't think that's the offensive replies. But some people don't like that reply. So in those cases, there's a very big difference between two... Like, there's a very big different mindset behind that I don't understand. The question is, do you not understand what I write, or do you not want to understand what I write? I mean, not you, they. they. <laughs> do they want to understand what, like... Many people jump onto the conclusion based on what they believe, but based on what they think, based on what they are thinking that I'm talking about. There was a crazy comment on YouTube about the cultural appropriation, and I, I'm 100% sure he or she did not watch the whole video. Yet, because I have a video titled Cultural Appropriation in Sashiko, they immediately think that I offend, I attack the non-Japanese for using the word Sashiko. I'm doing the opposite, if you know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm really doing the opposite. So... It takes some time to understand different culture, and I'm here for that. And I hope that those people will spend some time to understand it. Unfortunately, we try to look for the answers until we find something we feel comfortable. And that's really sad. Oh, come on. Ah, just a second, I have to fix it. See, if I talk like that, I make sometimes those mistakes. Mistakes means like, this kind of, oh, there we go. Konbanwa, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. And it takes some time, it really takes some time to be familiar with my writing. But I think many people, I think it's not incomplete writing because many other people understand it from the same writing. At the same time, um, I sometimes explain more in some material in the other articles. But main message, it's not... It might require spell or sometimes ten times to read it. To understand so like read between lines right R read between lines is kind of vague by itself correct like what do you mean by read between lines like there's no th not, if there's nothing between lines written how do we read between that how do we read something which is not written and that's the whole point of this conversation this uh, explanation we imagine things while reading that. So the reader, instead of reading the actual things which is written, we expect them to imagine certain things. Those imagination is based on the expectations. That's why we have to understand the culture a little bit. And I try to give the hint as much as I can. But those like expectation, those mutual understanding without checking each other. <laughs> those are the kind of foundation of the culture. And please don't do that when you write some technical documents or some thesis statement or, you know, science document. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, don't, don't do that in the academic because that's completely opposite of what they're looking for. Those documents are written for the purpose of giving them the right information. Like, right means like the intended information by eliminating those possibilities of imagining it. <laughs> if everybody imagine uh, what they want to imagine based on their culture when they have to read some manuals, it's a little bit too much. So you really, we ha really have to be careful what kind of writing we are doing it. 
But for Sashiko, we have to. We don't have to, but it's quite essential, very important to understand this concept. You don't have, like they don't have to be master. Like I don't know what the master is, but they don't have to master Japanese to do that. But I want them to understand there is a possibility of that non-written communication there. That's all I'm trying to do, and sometimes I get the comments. I don't understand, and I, you know, probably they're a little bit offended by reading what they think that I'm writing. That's why they come leave a comment. If they're not, if they don't have a problem, they wouldn't be, you know, writing those comments. Uh, so this is the problem of, I don't know if you can see that. Well, I sort of fixed it, but make sure to do the itokoki, the smoothing the fat look. This is one of the most difficult part of Sashiko. Ah, I don't know why I'm drinking cold soda where I feel a little bit cold. I don't know what to talk about though today. I, did I bring any topics? It, do, do you have any topic for me to talk about? Mm, 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 the end of the year of 2022. And thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, <laughs> I might do the. I might do some like a poll or some post asking for your comment about your resolution for the 2023. Uh, we, as a Japanese, we really love making resolutions, although resolutions mean almost nothing. I mean, it's just the phrase, it's not like actual promise or something, but we really like that. We, I remember making resolution every time so if you have any resolutions for the next year uh, of course it would be great if it's related to sashiko stitching or handcrafting that'd be really great but that's something we can probably elaborate thank you lily san it's a marigato gozaimasu which way should i go <laughs> it, it's really sad or I, it's not even sad it might not be it might not sound good to some people but I'm not really ambitious anymore I don't have that strong dream anymore and uh, my goal is to pass down Sashiko to the next generation and the sashiko we practice so it is very strong passion there i really I, I there's not there's no way that i can give up on that it's challenging because the trend is getting stronger and stronger um, so you know the mission that i have to do are getting bigger and bigger and more difficult to do with it at the same time at the same times the goal itself is not that difficult because there are so many people who learn from me including you here and as long as you, I keep sharing those stories and you are they are here there and here and there we will probably this Sashiko will not be gone It, the strongest part of what I do and what I'm sharing is that we will be doing the exactly same thing, exactly same thing 10 years from now. I mean, we shouldn't be doing exactly the same thing, but probably exactly the same thing because there's nothing above that, nothing beyond that. It's just simple sashiko stitching. 
So no matter how the world dif become different, we, I, at least I do not change what I do, what I, like, I'm not gonna be doing, like, a, how can I say, I'm not gonna be doing, I am not going to be teaching how to knit in front of this. Knitting or crochet, I will never do that. Because Sashiko is not part of what I would like to teach. I'm not a craft teacher. <laughs> I'm not a somebody who represents handcrafting. I, I don't do that. So what I do is Sashiko, and as a result, I will be doing exactly the same thing. 10 years from now, 20 years from now. So as long as I keep sharing the stories, the goal itself is quite satisfied already. Of course, of course, it's gonna make, it's gonna, <laughs> I have to work harder. I have to fight back more probably. But foundation is already made. Zero to one was the most difficult part and I completed zero to one. And sooner or later, I hope I will see. I will probably see that some people are teaching Sashiko based on what I teach. I, based on what I share. At this point, I know only one person who does that. Who do that? Who does that in Japan? In Japanese. Is there anybody who are doing that? I might be slipping some information, but as long as I know I don't, there might be some teachers who teach Sashiko based on what I share on my YouTube, and uh, I don't know that unless they really credit, even if they credit on their video, uh, if they don't um, tag it, or send me the link, or greet me over the email, I don't really understand those things. So there might be, there, there are, I think there are, some teachers who teach Sashiko based on what I share, um, but not. I I'm not aware of those things, but sooner or later, I don't know how soon it is, but this is my fifth year. It's gonna be sixth year next year to teach Sashiko in English, and it's about time that some people may start teaching about that kind of thing, which I'm very happy with. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna, I don't want to monopolize this Sashiko, there's nothing I can monopolize. So what I want to, what, what I want to see is that they teach Sashiko and they kind of articulate or make it clear, clarify the upstream of their Sashiko too. So uh, as I am trying to clarify where our Sashiko is from, if they introduce Sashiko to others with saying that their Sashiko is from this upstream, we can follow up with that. So that's the next step, next goal, next idea. Konbanwa, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Good evening. That's the next step. So, but that's the step. The goal itself is to pass down this Sashiko and it's probably almost satisfied. So I can't stop doing that too. <laughs> Technically speaking, I can just focus on stitching and I will be doing the exactly same thing 10 years from now. And that's one way to take. That's one way to take. And I keep saying that in Japanese, but it's quite comfortable to have this many people. Like not Instagram became pretty difficult when I started having many, many followers, which is great. At the same time, this, <laughs> I don't want to call them noise, but I started having a lot of noise that I don't, I don't explain myself anymore. I don't defend myself anymore. If somebody misunderstands me, so be it, because... I don't have time and energy to explain everything what I do. 
because many other people understand it already. So when they say, I don't understand what you're saying, I would say like, well, please keep reading. So they will find the answer. I don't really explain what I'm saying. Um, but <clears throat> because of that, it's kind of tiring, challenging, although I stopped doing those things. The closed group, like, you know, English gathering, even here, such good live streaming, Patreons, those are quite small group that I know who they are at this moment. I might not know their face. I, I usually know their face, but I might not know their face, but that's kind of small, yet it's good to be able to know who they are. So, without thinking about the outcome, this is quite comfortable size. But at the same time, I realized that my voice might matter to somebody else. Somebody else who might be suffering. Like, I don't want to repeat what I went through to somebody else who might be doing exactly the same thing as, as I do in sashiko or similar crafting. It wasn't easy, it was not a happy moment, so... And... Many people misunderstand, not many, some people will misunderstand what Sashiko is. Not a misunderstand. Some people will only look at one part of Sashiko and then get satisfied. And those people probably most likely will move on to something else. Because there's no such a, there's not so much things about Sashiko if they focus on stitching. After 10 years of focusing on stitching, I think they run out of steam, or they run out of passion or interest. Again, it's just stitching. <laughs> There's a reason we can keep doing that for ever and ever. So, it's really sad that they don't see the whole picture, yet they think they know it. It's not because of the culture has been filtered or something, it's because they are missing the most delicious part of things. That's that's so sad, so... I'm trying to explain what is the most delicious part of Sashiko. My hope, to ne my hope for next year is to do Sashiko outdoors. That's a great idea, that's a great idea. I will do that same thing. <laughs> My tour in Japan in April will be like that. If you find me stitching in the train or in the bus, that's me. So that's us actually. We <laughs> will be probably stitching throughout the whole tour. So yeah, that might be the that, that's gonna be another dream to see. I. I don't know how different it is in Japan right now, uh, as I have not been back to Japan for almost 10 years. I want to see people stitching when outside as well. In 2012, I was, I did not see many, oof, not even many, I don't know if... I don't think I saw anybody stitching outside. People look at me quite interestingly when I was stitching in the airport. <laughs> Have you stitched on the plane yet? Um, we you can stitch on the plane. You can stitch on the plane, and they were okay. I mean, I could. Please contact your airline and also TSA as well, but I could bring this needle and thimble with no problems. Fabric was of course okay and needle pin cushion was of course okay because they are not. They're simply fabric. Needle was okay. I didn't they did not mention about it. And only one thing that I had to go back to the check-in counter I mean, the, before the security and give it back to my friends, there was this one. 
this one they did not let me bring inside and back then I measured the <laughs> length of this blade I believe that there was a specific length of the blade that you can bring into the airplane and I believe I, I researched it and this one side of the length was shorter than the requirement so I thought it was okay but they said that it's longer if when we combine those two blades so they could not <laughs> let me get, bring inside and I you know it's it's not a good idea to fight back there there's nothing I can do so I just okay I'll uh, you know thankfully I had a time and you know I live in very very small town so airport is not crazy at all <laughs> so it was not a big deal to go back and you know redo it so when I travel there is one scissors from Japan that you they claim that you can bring into the airplane I don't know about the international travel but I often cut the thread before I go inside and I bring the patterns that I don't have to do much cutting like this pattern and I do not bring those patterns with kasane a lot because I have to keep cutting so I pre-cut it and since I have not been back to Japan for 10 years I don't remember the last time I stitched on for the international flight I always do it in the domestic flight which is very short few hours so I never had issues If the flight is like less than one hour, you, I probably wouldn't open it. I might just, you know, take a nap or something. But it's very good to have before the... Uh, in front of the gate. Because it can kill a lot of time. Ah, Tsuchiko-san, arigatou gozaimasu. I really appreciate you sharing... Oh, I appreciate. I really appreciate sharing. Yeah, for <laughs> I get nervous all of a sudden. I really appreciate you sharing the stories and something important in life through Sashiko. Kochira koso. Well, there are tons of the good messages in what we practice, and I wish, I wish, and I. This is my goal again, actually. Hope to introduce another things. So pretty much like introducing Sashiko, like sharing the story of Sashiko is my. Sort of under umbrella, my, under my umbrella, I can be responsible. I can be sure what I do. So, but there are so many things around it. It's not does not exist by itself. So having somebody who have better idea, and if I can introduce them, like I, if I can be the guide for them to understand more, that would be really, really next goal, next dream. It's more like a dream. It's not a goal. I don't. I'm not that. I don't want to be that greedy. My goal is simple. But sometimes when I need in the hospital waiting room, some people ask me, what are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. It's like right now, smartphone and, you know, before it was book or game. But I think it's a quite, quite, quite good way to spend time while waiting especially when you don't have to really focus on stitching itself so i hope you can take photos of outside and stitching i mean you don't have to take yourself take a photo of yourself just you know take stitching outside so if you i do such outdoors i hope someone see it and is interested yes that's how we sh like you know it would be so fun to see somebody stitching Sashiko in front of you who is stitching. Ah, oh, that might be the... That might, that might be one way to start a romantic relationship. Which I'm too late and, you know, I... <laughs> but, you know... Who knows? I mean, I, I don't do that. 
I'm married, but you know, can be something to look for. Again, in Sashiko, the true life, I don't want to say true life, um, the old life is true, but they say that 60 years old is just the beginning of Sashiko. Like, 60 years old is too young for them to consider artisans. 60 years. They've been doing Sashiko for like 30 years, 40 years, and but they are still considered them as the babies. What, what was I? You know, I'm not even babies. I was, what? Was I, my, I have no idea. I don't want to even mention that, but <laughs> Sashiko does not require like strength, body strength. So, yeah. Anybody can start at any age, and they can continue as long as they want. Uh, probably one obstacle is eyes. We, you know, as age goes, we have little blur, like weak eyes or blurness. But as long as we can thread the needles and follow the line, each stitches are not that important, so many people can do that. Well, I cannot thread with closing my eyes yet, so I, yeah, I, I don't think I can. I, I used to, I, I once tried to practice that, but I couldn't do that. Yep, Jade, Jade, I hope it... Sh let me know if it, how it goes. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot promise that you can bring everything I mentioned. Needles should be okay, I hope. Nobody will hijack the plane with one needle, I hope. But needle can be the weapon. Like According to my daughter, needle can be the weapon. So... Usually, people look at you. <laughs> well, probably, especially because I have all the Sashiko stitching on my denim and jacket. So I look like, you know, stitchers. Who is stitching? So it might, that's because of me stitching as well as I do that often right before and right after quilt con. So there are tons of um, quilters. So they are probably interested in what I'm doing. Do I go anywhere else by plane? Oh, I go to Florida. But Florida is quite close, so I did not... Did I bring it? I brought it, yeah, I brought something, but... Hmm. I don't remember stitching much in the airplane. Or even the airport. Why was that? I strongly remember stitching in... Austin. Austin Airport. That was my first year and it was right before COVID. Good old days. Three years ago. Three years ago? No way. It is three years ago. Wow. It's wow. Ay ay. <laughs> I'll be like sixty by just blinking my eyes, I guess. Gosh, time flies so fast. But I have kind of one theory that when one stitch sashiko and they forget the time, um, if like you know, we sometimes forget, like we sometimes lose the sense of time. Like for example, I feel like I'm stitching only for one hour, yet the time has passed like for five years, not years, five hours or six hours. Like, let's say I start stitching at ten o'clock at night, and I finish stitching, and I think like, well, it's time to go to bed. Um, let's go to bed before it changes the day, like before 12 o'clock, like before, you know, the peak. Then you check the 
time. You check the clock and it's like 2 o'clock already. So there are those two hours missing. It's actually has passed, but you did not feel that. So the point is that it actually has passed. Yes, the time has passed and, you know, it's 2 o'clock, not 12 o'clock. So those two hours actually were there, but you did not feel that, right? I did not feel it. I did not feel those two hours. My brain misunderstood those time, which means that my body also did not count those two hours. So this is my stupid theory, but those two hours are not going to be added to our life. So I do not get older or age. I don't get aged for those two hours that I'm missing. As the result, I become younger in comparison by doing sashiko, by losing time, the sense of time. It makes sense when it comes to... <laughs> there were so many powerful elderly people in Sashiko and I was wondering how can they so powerful at the age of that and this might be the theory so when you lose that sense of time your body does not re recognize it as the aging as the result you don't really age <laughs> I mean it's a crazy theory so you know it's a, please take it as a joke but it may not be you know may not be super crazy about it may not be a super crazy idea it, the same result can happen with meditating uh, many people think that sashiko is a good way to meditate and it is true sashiko can be a good meditation technique and meditation hmm? sashiko can be used for the meditation if they want to and they can combine that they can apply each other but sashiko itself is not a meditation it's gonna be kind of risky to i have to explain the risk if I, i'm gonna risky um it can it can be sometimes risky to focus like con, con, like equalize Meditation equals sashiko, sashiko equals meditation can be... I think it's risky, and I have to explain why it's risky. Mm, and I don't know if I can explain that. Let me think about the example. Why is it risky to think about sashiko as the meditation? Hmm... The reason I think that it is kind of risky to combine meditation and sashiko all together is that you, we, uh, stitches represent who we are. For that, I think, as I keep saying, stitching, like, especially what I do as Sashiko stitching, is the form of praying. It's a prayer for those people who practice Sashiko. And in my understanding, meditation is more like, especially Zen. Zen meditation is to make yourself empty, ku. You are going to empty yourself, empty your brain, empty your mind, you know, too much mind, too many mind those westernized zen is too many too much to the empty it and those emptiness is very important as well as very respected and you know precious yet empty itself is not going to represent whole sashiko i want them to be more emotional like if you're angry i want uh, if they are angry, I want their stitches as angry stitches. If they're happy, happy stitching will be there. And, you know, those anger, happiness, sadness, joy, those emotions are part of our life. Uh, when we have somebody else, something else to care, those emotions will transform to the prayer in long term. It's very long term. In long term, it's going to be prayer. 
and I think that's the core practice of sashiko, not the pattern, not the stitching, not the meditation itself, more like instead of focusing on being empty, I want them to focus on the prayer. And for that, prayer can be the meditation as well in different cultures. But in most cases in Japanese culture, meditation is not equal to the prayer. Um, if I can, it's kind of extreme analogy, but for me, my understanding, meditation is really inner toward myself. Um, it's for me. I do meditation. I, I, I like meditation, so I know how strong, how powerful the meditation is. But it's more like in, to, in inner, toward inside, toward myself, inward. And it's for me, it's for self. But prayer is for outside, for somebody else, for others. And I believe Sashiko's principle is more like outside, not inside. So Sashiko's meditation, Sashiko's like especially Zen, is not wrong, but it's missing a very important part, which is now I explained that as the out, like outward or inward. And without outward concept, Sashiko can be quite boring. And it loses just the whole sense, like, like those Japanese women who stitched for their family, husband or son, did they think about meditation as themselves? Like, did they care for them, their happiness or something? Like, did they focus on themselves? They had a lot of emotions, so they probably took care of themselves by stitching. At the same time, they did not focus on taking care of themselves. Otherwise, those sashiko jackets we can find in the history wouldn't be that beautiful. The point is that it comes with the result. Result is not important, not that important, but it comes with the result. And that result explains, tells us more stories. And... For that, I think sashiko is... Okay, such is more than more than introduced more than what is introduced in English right now. It's unfortunate. Uh, it's it. Sorry. It is unfortunate that nobody could explain that before. But again, this is not easy. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but. Oh, hello, Shinobu-san. I'm quite unique for that. I was I was forced to learn what Sashiko is, right? So I have already Sashiko knowledge, Sashiko stories behind it. And sharing the Sashiko stories in Japanese itself is quite strong, quite powerful. So me being able to write about Sashiko in Japanese is good enough, good, was good enough. And I was doing that until 2013, 2020, nah, 2012. But the fact that I can think in English, not only write, not only translate, but I can think, I can build a logic or conversation like this in English is another skill one might need. Translation is not, well, we... I believe that AI, the in intellectual, artificial intelligence, is not going to replace all the translators. And some of the translators will be probably replaced by the machine, like DeepL, like, you know, those translation software is awesome. It's extremely easy to use. So, like, the some or many translators will probably lose their job in the future, but there will be a one specific category of the people who will never lose their job as a translator. Those are... I don't know how they are called. 
but they are cultural translator they they translate the materials with understanding both both cultures so they will there won't be unnecessary dispute with misunderstanding in between so i think that's what i'm trying to do that's what i'm doing and i hope i can help other people as well but in order to do that, I have to understand. Like for example, kintsugi. If I'm gonna teach, if, if, if I'm gonna talk about kintsugi, I really have to understand. Not not have to. I would would like to understand it, and I cannot. <laughs> I, technically, like it's just technical issues. I cannot, you know, learn some specific topic in the specific time frame. Like it, it cannot be done in a few months. So I have to find somebody who can. I have to team up with somebody who can do that. So it's gonna be a long story, but I'm not giving it up. Koshin no aizomito arigato gozaimasu. So in Japan, I started selling those. Well, not I. My mother started selling those five kinds of indigo dye, which is gonna be hopefully, hopefully, hopefully coming to the U.S. in 2023. I don't know how it's gonna be. How is your quilt coming along? <laughs> um, actually, yes. So I submit that small quilt to the quilt con, and unfortunately, that they did not. They are not going to display the quilt for the quilt con. I mean, they had a like. I think one third of the quilt submitted was accepted. So I, my quilt is not gonna be on the exhibition for the quilt con. Um, how it, it's it's done. It's done. It's very small and it's done. It's it's. I don't know if it's called quilt, but my quilt teacher said it can be quilt. So okay, I consider it as a quilt. Uh, it's more like a trial, and. I will introduce that here in the live streaming after the quilt con. I will bring it to them and then I think I want to show it there first to the students I will teach to. And after that I will bring back and <laughs> it's not like it's not big, it's very really small. It's it has a lot of So it's the quilt done by Sashiko Artisan. So it's the approach to the quilt from Sashiko's perspective. So which does not really look like Sashiko. I mean the quilt. There's one uh quilt. I don't know if she's going to bring it to quilt on but quilt con Her name is Ali. I can show you the Instagram account. Not a show, I can look up the Instagram account. She made a fantastic quilt um, based on her understanding of Sashiko. And it's, that's the quilt based. Um, that's the quilt with the Sashiko technique and Sashiko idea, Sashiko mindset. I cannot find it, so I'll probably update it somewhere. So if, when we imagine the quilt, her quilt is the great example of co combining the idea of Sashiko and quilt. What I did was more like, let's see if a Sashiko artisan can make a quilt without compromising the principle of sashiko <laughs> which was which might not be a good idea why well, I, I completely understand that they did not take our my like not our they did not take my quilt as the exhibition it can be quite marvelic is it the english word it's it's really uncommon to be displayed and you know as much as as much as i respect quilt and the approach itself is really like I could not give up the principle of Sashiko to make it quilt. 
<laughs> so for some people it's not quilled and if that was the like a t traditional quilt contest i would i would not think about submitting it to begin with um since it was more like modern quilt and you know they were very welcoming to accept those things so you decided to submit it but uh, my quilt teacher told me that next year or next time I should aim to be in the exhibition and make it. Well, which might require some compromise in my strong <laughs> stubbornness in Sashiko, so I might not do that. But it was a very good experience to make one quilt. So I will show it. I will show it. Uh, sometimes in March, please expect that sometimes in March. It's right there, but I just want to keep it just in case. All right, so it has been one hour. I will stop around this much. Just one quick an announcement in Japanese. え、すいません、日本語でちょっとだけアナウンスさせてください。明日の配信、すいません、明日じゃない。今日の配信、日本語の配信が金曜日なんですけど、今日金曜日の夜の10時半ぐらいからの配信の開始予定なんですが、その前